Our service for the Sunday of the Passion is found in your bulletin or in the Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, as the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, worthily magnify thy holy name, in Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind has sent thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. First reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of the teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my ear. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set face, my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let, me confront me. Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me? Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment, or a moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Say so. Now let us read responsibly from Psalm 22. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from my words, from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, despite Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In our ancestors, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, in you they trusted, and were not put to shame. But I am and I can scorned by others and despised by peoples. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver, let him rescue the one who you delight. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. 
You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you are the tests of my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircled me, strong bulls of the shawl surround me. They opened wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am roared out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in my breast. My mouth is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me, the company of evil doers circles me, my hands beat my I can count all my bones, they stare and gloat over me. They, they divide my clothes among themselves, and pour my clothing and my socks. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of God. Save me from the mouth of the lion. Second reading this morning is from the Epistle of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being failed in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A few notes on our reading. Um, please follow along in your green insert. Uh, there is some uh, lines that you all will say, and that will be the lines that are given to the crowd. So please look out for that. Uh, the note to stand is slightly before uh, when you need to stand. So but, uh, I do ask that you stand at the mention of the place Golgotha, and I'll raise my hand up for you to know that as well. We continue our service now with the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that he was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. And they said, What is it to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed. And he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. So they took counsel and brought with them, bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price on him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor. The governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, You have said so. 
But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. And Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor wondered greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, I have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they all said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all answered, Let him be crucified. And Pilate said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, or rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers of the governor took Jesus, into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him, and plating a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and they put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat upon him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to be crucified. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man they compelled to carry his cross. Now when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down on the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. If he is the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land 
until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Shabbatani. That is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place. They were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Throughout our season of Lent, you may have noticed that our Sundays are called Sundays in Lent, not of Lent. That's because Sunday is considered a feast, even in a time of fasting. In fact, during this fast of Lent, which we are still in even in Holy Week, there are, from Ash Wednesday until Easter, not 40, but 46 days, counting those six days of those Sundays within this season. The point here is that every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection of our Lord, and that makes this Sunday today unique. And it's not just unique because we often call this day Palm Sunday for the triumphal in entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And that's contrasted with the first title that our prayer book gives this day, the Sunday of the Passion. Sunday isn't just unique because of those two events juxtaposed together. In fact, the Sunday of the Passion itself is what makes this Sunday unique. It is this Sunday is the one Sunday that we get a full picture of the Passion in everything that happens in it, with its entirety and horror. Yes, we, we get parts of the passion throughout the rest of the church year in, in various times. We do get a small portion of the passion, those events where we point to Jesus as the King of the Jews, when we remember the last Sunday after Pentecost in years B and C. 
But this is the one time in the church year that on a Sunday we get the full story, the full event of the Passion. Now, it's important for us to see the passion in its full scope. Living into the passion as we do today reminds us of what Jesus suffered for our sakes. It allows us to live more fully into the joy that we will experience next week, knowing all that was put into that moment knowing all that Jesus did for us. We cannot live fully into the story of our faith without experiencing this Sunday of the Passion first. We cannot even understand Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem without comprehending the suffering he endured. Now our church calendar is designed so that we can experience everything on a Sunday. If you missed Ash Wednesday, the first Sunday in Lent will still make you feel that Lent has truly started. If you miss the 40th day after Easter, the Thursday of Ascension Day, the Sunday following will get you up to speed on our Lord's heavenly ascension. And if you miss Good Friday before Easter, you still get to experience the Passion on this Sunday. But don't stop there. Take our experience of the passion on this Sunday as an opportunity to live into your faith more deeply. You cannot truly live into the passion and resurrection without first witnessing our great tritium of services. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the Great Vigil of Easter. These three services were once one great service spanning three days. They let us live into the Passion and Resurrection with Jesus and the disciples in a deeper and more real way. This part of the year is when all the Abrahamic faiths hold some sort of holy remembrance. This involves time, and sometimes that's time taken away from work, even. Others in their own beliefs in these Abrahamic faiths are recognized for taking that time, taking that time from work even. Why can't it be the same for us? Why can't we all, you all, take the time for Good Friday too? <clears throat> So live into the times. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection this week. Live more fully into the events that we are recalling today. In this way, live more fully and build up your life in faith. Yeah. <laughs>
continue our service now by declaring our faith together in the words of the Nicene. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is faith by the prophets. And I believe one holy God and the apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Healing. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church in the world. Almighty and ever living God, who thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. We grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity in godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Trey, our priest, as well as Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and all other denominational leaders, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land. Especially Joe, our president, Josh, our governor, John, our mayor, and all our local elected officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open over the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Alexandra, Isabella, Linda, Liz, Shauna, Tammy, Barbara, Patty, Christine, Lucille, Maisie, Rich, Andrew, Tom, Jimmy, Arthur, Lauren, Kay, Chet, Jen, <laughs> Veronica, Jamie and family, Barb, Tim, Joyce, Scott, Sharon, Bush, Rita, Paul, Lou, Sophia, Lou Jr., Karen, Ryan, John W., Marge, Mary, Ron, Michelle, Madeline, Mary Ann, Janice, Ron, Frank, Dion, Ruth, Alma, <coughs> Megan and Baby, Pike, Claire, John, Lana, the Gresco family, Carmela, Bob, Todd, Miller, Annie, Jimmy, Stephanie, 
and Brahma. And all that are true in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks and pray for their celebrating birthdays this week. Garrett Kirk, Deborah Cahill, David Callahan, Chad Stoner, Susan Hemp, and Molly Kirk. We pray for the children, teens, and college students at this parish, for those serving in the military. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark A. B. Zion Church, Newtown, and St. Paul's Little Town. Lord, look graciously on thy church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for thy people and equip us for our ministries. We offer up any other prayers at this time, whether aloud or in our hearts. We pray for all who have suffered from natural disasters and weather in this country and throughout the world. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life, in thy faith and fear, especially Christian martyrs throughout the world. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace out of all the good examples the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of the heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. In a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins into our God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, say, Forgive us all those tasks, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please the goodness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy and promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Now please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Amen. The peace to those who are with us online as well. You may be seated.
Please look at all the announcements at your leisure. Um, we do have a lot of good information in there, including our services for this week. So starting with Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m., as well as our Good Friday service at 12, or if you can't make that, our service for the stations at 6. Uh, and then uh, we have on Saturday evening, the Great Vigil of Easter at 6.30. If you've never experienced this service, this is the time to do it. Uh, it's, it's one of the greatest services we have in the church. And then, of course, our Easter Sunday services. Um, this at the usual time and our uh, later one, a little bit later than normal, uh, with a prelude at 10.30. The other big thing for the announcements, um, this is traditionally uh, when we've done our uh, vestry elections. Now, according to our bylaws, if we uh, only have candidates for the positions we have to fill, uh, we don't hold an election, we announce those names, and then our vestry will vote on uh, that slate uh, at our next meeting. So uh, those candidates that have stood up are Jennifer Losey, Brad Owen, Ruth Mooney, and John Smith. So please, uh, when you see them, if you see them, uh, please uh, give them uh, your congratulations uh, for their uh, standing up uh, for uh, this great ministry for this church. Now, we also have an election for um, our delegate and alternate for diocesan convention. So these are the people who represent our church at convention, and that will be held on Saturday, October 21st this year. So those two that um, have put their names forward for that are Liz Warren as our delegate and Perry Warren as our alternate. We do have uh, ballots for those uh, in the back as you go out on those chairs in the very back there. So we are having our election for them since our bylaws don't say anything one way or another about our election for those candidates. So it's a simple yes or no uh, for um, approving that slate. So you can find those ballots in the back uh, and uh, all members in good standing, if you've been with us uh, in person or online at least three times this year, you are eligible to vote. So if you're one of those people, we've got pens in the back, we've got those ballots, we've got the ballot boxes, please uh, make sure you do that before we leave. Uh, also in the back, we've got our sign-in. Please sign in if you haven't done so already for this service. And we've got our offertory plate as well. And for those with us online, uh, you can send in your offering to us through our Tidely link that is uh, just about everywhere you can find us online. And now as we move into the Holy Communion portion of our service, Please know all baptized Christians are warmly invited to receive. If for any reason you wish not to receive, simply cross your arms. That will be a sign to me that you'd like a blessing instead. We do have gluten-free wafers as well for those who need them. <coughs> simply ask if you need one of those. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. <coughs>
As our service continues with the Eucharistic prayer, please stand as you are able. <coughs> the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meek, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, who by his suffering and death became the author of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord of God's God. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, for the Son of the Highest. Glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may thereby as one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, <coughs> the remission of sins. This is often as you shall drink. The remembrance of me. For for our Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, who celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, to be in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death. His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We know something to see to be a merciful Father to hear us. O thy Almighty goodness, are safe to bless and sanctify. With thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of heaven and life, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institute, in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire that Father and goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, with some of his teaching be to grant by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood. We and all thy holy church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Although we are worthy to remain with sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound in duty and service, not weighing our merits, Pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Christ, our Passover, once for all, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. The Lamb of God, and take us away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, and take us away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, and take us away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy now, holy, great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The guests of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanksgiving. The body of Christ. 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 Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you in the name of the Blessed. Body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Our service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for the God who feed us in these holy mysteries, the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and who has assured us thereby by favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, we all honor and glory, the world without end. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God.